Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very first episode of Conversations with Zingdad. <laughs> this will be a monthly uh, video clip, short video clip, in which I will be interviewing my dear friend and housemate, Arn, aka Zingdad, and I will be finding out from him what is alive for him, what is he working on, what is concerning him, what is happening in his life, both as Arn and as Zingdad. So, welcome on, <laughs> and without further ado, I'd like to ask you the first question. So, I've been hearing some very strange sounds emanating from your side of the house. <laughs> um, have you started speaking in tongues? Would you like to share with us what's going on there? Ni hao, xie xie ni. Yours too. Yeah, so, uh, the, the speaking in tongues is Chinese. Ni hao, xie xie ni means hello, thank you. Um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really just beginning. Uh, I'm, but the answer to the question about the about the, uh, the Chinese is really that um, my work has just been taking off and expanding in China. Um, I've uh, suddenly got an, an uh, not suddenly the last while since my my book was be, uh, was translated into China since the Ascension Papers was available in Chinese. Um, it's really just been taking off in China. And I'm I'm blessed to have more and more interactions with with Chinese people, and there's um, a, a, a group in China that I'm working with to uh, translate and publish and release my works there. And we're starting an Ascension School, and there are all kinds of exciting um, future dreams that we have. And so I thought it just made sense to see. You know, how would it be? Is it is it really difficult? How would it be to learn Chinese? And and I'm I'm just amazed how much I'm actually enjoying it. It's slow going, um, learning any new language. I mean, it's, it feels like being a baby. You've you know you start right at the beginning, um, and and I I'm I'm not really um, practicing with other people. It's all online uh, using an app, so I don't really know how good or how bad I am yet. Uh, but I'm having fun with it. Short answer to your question. Well, I have to share with you, viewers, he's incredibly dedicated. <laughs> he spends many hours every day learning Chinese, and it sounds pretty damn good to me, I have to say. I think it's a really hard language to learn. Um, so on the next question I'd like to ask you is we get so many, many emails from um, people asking, what's happened to you, Arn? Uh, when are we going to get the next Adamo video? Um, are you still alive? Have you ascended? <laughs> so maybe you can just um, tell me what you'd like to answer to those clients that ask you those questions. Thank you, Lisa. So th the thing is, this is, this is part of the course in, in, in Zingdad land. Um, if you go back and you look at at, at the rate of, of release, I, I mean, I, I I'm I'm typically not somebody that's you know puts out something fresh all the time. I, I'm I'm not spinning the top because I don't consider myself to be like some source of of of, of eternal wisdom. The, the the stuff that arrives for me passes through me. Um, I'm more of a a, a a conduit than 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 a source. So um, it's like I, I find that I'm waiting for something that wants to be said, and 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 th that's up to Adamu or Eight or you know wh whoever it is that I work with. That's up to them. Um, I have my part to play, and for my part, I also don't really have this feeling that that the world will come to an end without some new update from me. So, um, yeah, I carry on with what I'm doing. I, I, I've got my healing work that I'm doing. It keeps me busy. But if, if, I'm, if I'm absolutely honest, the focus of, of my work, my life's work, is myself. Um, my own inner journey, my own healing, my own uh, ascension and transformation, my own eternal becoming is really the focus of my work. But your question does bring to the surface something that's... that's um, really um, very much alive for me at the moment. And, 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 and I'd like to share this it's, uh, as briefly as I can with you because the, the, the completeness of what I have to share is, is, um, is a lot. It's, uh, um, you know, one could probably write books about this. But really, the awareness I have is that there are like these, these three 
worlds, these three zones of control that we each have. There's, there's our inner world. This is your own most private experience. Your thoughts, your emotions, your body sensations, your, the stuff that's, that's completely private to you. That's your inner world. Then we have the, our real world. This is the external world, your home, your friends and family, the people you engage with, the world you engage with, the town you live in and, and the work you go to and that sort of thing. That's your real world. The, the, the world of the things that you engage with personally, the things you touch, see, smell, hear, uh, your own personal sens sensorial world. That's your real world. Then there is the the greater the, the virtual world maya the world of illusion this is the world this is the reported world the world that that seems to be so incredibly real and concrete it's the world that you see in the newspapers and 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 on tv and in the media and in the alternative media and you know what whatever your 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 your, your uh, social media it's that world now, right now, that world seems to be completely mad. It's completely lost its collective stuff. It's completely mad. I mean, we've got uh, a pandemic that we're just coming out of, and then there's another one, you know, waiting in the wings, and, 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 and I'm sure there are more pandemics coming. And, and you know, then there's the, the wound-up hyper-response of, 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 you know, the vaccinations that you have to have, and... and social distancing and all these things that you've got to do and masking up and all of that because we are told um, that we must and that we're good people if we do. And then there's, there's World War Three that's busy kicking off and we're also told how we're supposed to feel about that and who we are supposed to stand with and um, there's that. And if I look at that virtual world, I also see famine coming. I mean, there's... there's um, all kinds of problems all over the world with crops and, and problems with distribution and um, our economic system is, I mean, it's, it's, it's a zombie, it's a dead man walking, it's, it's collapsed years ago, they just keep pumping it up. And so if I look into that virtual world, then it looks like that world is ending. It's, it's, it's you know, the four horsemen of the apocalypse are riding. So... It might seem like a funny thing, given all of that, to say that I think we have it completely back to front. Our focus, most of us, is completely wrong because we're giving all of our attention to that world, to that virtual world. And it's, it's demanding our attention. That's kind of what it's doing. It's demanding our attention and it's telling us that we need to be in a state of panic. Lose control. Be in a state of panic. And it's telling you that your personal world, where you live and where you work and all of that stuff, is under threat and, and uh, is, is, is not healthy and not good and uh, you'll own nothing and be happy about it or whatever other lies that they're wanting to tell you. It's telling us that. So it, it's really calling us to give all of our attention to this virtual world. And in the, the summary of, of my feeling is that this is all wrong way around and and i think it's being done intentionally i think they are attempting to keep us they the dark ones are attempting to keep us all off balance and out of our center and out of our real world and out of our most real world the, the private inner world and the healthiest thing that we can each do right now is reverse that process come back to feeling Hold space for yourself, arrive here, breathe, feel, feel what's going on inside your body, inside your emotions. Because if we do, then something important happens. If you're willing to feel your body sensations, just feel them. You know, not, oh, I have a headache, I'll take a headache pill. Just feel your body sensations, your body is talking to you. It's telling you something very important in every moment. If you're willing to feel your body, then the, the, the things that are blocked and stuck and hurting in your body can move. And there's wisdom to be obtained. You know, maybe your body is telling you something. 
I don't know, drink more water or get a bit of exercise or do something healthy or, you know, maybe there's, there's really information there. Um, I woke up just this morning with some pretty intense painful feelings going on in my body and I, oh, you know, what's going on with my body and because I was willing to feel, I could feel deeper and I could say, oh, it's actually in my emotional body because that's what happens. If you're willing to feel with your body, then your emotional body becomes present to you. You can start to feel your emotions. We all try and avoid our emotions. I've got a bit of the blues. I better take an antidepressant to just nuke it, to not feel it. The opposite is what we should be doing. Feel, feel, feel. Feel and process and sound and express your emotions. If you're willing to do that, then there's a deepest feeling sense. There is your energy body. This is the world of like your, your, your chakras. Um, and through your energy body, we are all connected to oneness, to God, to goddess, to, um, to, to the collective consciousness. This is where deepest knowing comes from. Wisdom comes from. If I do that, if I just allow myself to come back to feeling, then I can calm down, I can center myself, and from a place of being, I can find my clarity. What is it that I'm called to do? What really needs my attention? Not the lies, obfuscations, manipulations, and excuse the word, but plain downright bullshit that the, the, the purveyors of the virtual world are trying to tell me I must focus on. Because that's bullshit. It's lies. I mean, I'm not saying there isn't a war in the Ukraine. I'm sure there is. Of course there is. But how I'm supposed to feel about it, what that's supposed to mean to me, what I'm supposed to do about that, where my attention is supposed to go, is manipulation control and lies. Now, if I center myself and I come to my knowing, then I know when they tell me there's a pandemic, it, what does this really mean for me? And when they tell me I have to take some therapeutic in my arm, do I really? Is that really right for me? And so on and so on and so on. From within, I can find my centering and my truth. When I, when I do healing with clients and we, 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 we connect with the heart chakra, there's a structure in there, inside your heart, your heart chakra. I call it the, the truth bell. When you hear truth, your truth bell rings. We say, oh, that resonates for me. I can feel that. I can feel that that's true. But you have to be able and willing and connected. If you clamp down on a bell, you take a bell, you hold it in your hand, you clamp it down, it can't ring. It's the same. The bell of your heart, the truth bell, has to be held lightly so that, so that you can hear it ring when truth is spoken. Or so that you can feel truth coming in through your being. You can be inspired from within, from your connection with the divine. So we're doing it all the wrong way around. And um, this is what I'm focusing on. It's the thing I'm trying to remind my clients to do. And I suppose this is a, an invitation and a reminder to you to um, spend some time feeling. Just, just feel, just feel. Even if that's all you do, you're being with a part of yourself that's perhaps hurting or traumatized or scared or, you know, I mean, this world can be pretty scary. You're being with that part of you. You're holding that part of you. It's like a, a crying child. You pick the crying child up, you hold it. You don't have to have a solution for its tears. Just hold that child. Hold yourself in that same way. Hold your emotional body, your, 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 your physical body, your energy body. Just love yourself. Be there for yourself. And things move. Things change. Wisdom arises. Awareness, awareness comes. So when I do all of that, then um, I find I'm, 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 I'm putting my feet on the path I should be on. And then I find... My goodness, there actually is something that wants to come through me that wants to be said. Not because I believe the world needs it, but because I feel I need to say it. And from that place, it appears, um, there is something coming from Adamu in the near future. And, um, and, and Eight and I are, are in, in, in deep talks again. Um, book two of the Ascension Papers kind of stalled. Um, some years ago, 
because I had gone as far as I could go with eight, and he just put me on hold. And eight and I are writing. We, we're actually starting from the beginning. We're rewriting book two of the Ascension Papers, updating it, getting it, um, the chapters that are available on my website, getting those updated, and then I, I presume we will continue and complete, complete the writing. So, long answer to a short question. That's what's alive for me right now. Well, thank you very much for sharing that with us, On. It's, it's very useful and helpful. I mean, me, to me specifically, you know, this uh, understanding that um, my doing must flow from my being and not the other way around. And when it, when it happens like that, then I don't waste time, effort, and energy on things. Uh, I don't get distracted by things, but I really just do the things which my soul is calling me to do and which are in alignment with my most authentic self. And that feels good. <laughs> So thank you for sharing that with us, On, and um, we will see you again next month for our second episode of Conversations with Zingdad. Bye. Thank you very much, Lisa. Bye-bye, everybody.